Hey everyone, my name is Chief Oaklaw and welcome to the finale of Let's Play Alan Wake. In the last episode, we had probably one of the best boss battles ever, ever with a tornado. In this episode, we've got to find the clicker. So, can we talk to her? Nope. This is find the clicker. I have a compass that tells me exactly where to go. I'm not exactly finding it, more like follow the leader. Let's go. Alright, so it's through here. Nice apartment, Alan, though. you're scaring me now. Come back to bed. Have you taken your pills? Yes, I have. I have. I've taken all the pills in all the land. I've taken all I the coffee. It's brilliant. Departure is your best work yet. You're a genius. I'm so proud Whoa. of you. Come back to bed. So we'll talk more about it in the morning. Come, Come back, back to, to bed, bed, Alan. Come back to bed, Tom. Okay. Ah. Yeah. Oh, so this is what we do. We basically build stuff using. Uh, words. Oh, that's pretty cool. Thomas Zane. My you diving suit buddy. Okay. Whoa. Hello. It's me. And I look happy, which is kind of creepy. Mr. Scratch. Wait, so he's my double ganger? Okay. I I get it. So basically this world is just so anything I point at. Oh, take forever, why not? Cool. No, I'm curious, is there anything like around here that oh, thermos flask? Mmm, coffee. Wait, bird. Just <laughs> Yep, just a bird. Oh. oh, oh, hello. I followed the idea of a path. Followed the idea of a path. Do you know what? I was saying about this game having like it sort of losing its roots. This is, I actually really like this idea. The fact that it's like pen, there's nothing there. Instead of it being like, oh, just go to the I'm final boss. Out. Whoa, hello. What? I'm leaving you, Alan. I met someone. I'm in love with someone else. Alice? No, what do you say? That's yeah. not true. You don't love me. How could you? You don't even love yourself. All you do is torture yourself with work you can't do anymore. No, I, I love you more than anything in the world. You're, you're my muse. Who are you? What have you done with my Alice? Just a shoebox. What are you doing? What's this got to say? It wasn't true. Nothing like that had ever happened. See, look. Look at that. Awesome. I actually... <clears throat> for what this game sort of lacked after it You're not my Barbara. went its weird way, this is actually pretty cool. I promise to be good. Please, untie me, you naughty boy. I will help you out your masterpiece. I will love you forever. No, you're not Barbara Jagger. I made a terrible mistake. I should have never written you back. You came back wrong. Your heart is filled with darkness. Put that knife away, Thomas. Put it down. Your heart is filled with darkness. Cut it out. Ah! Ah! Take you back to the depths of cave land. Oh, ooh, Thomas Zane killed. Killed... Oh, dear lord, he went insane. Can you imagine just running out of, like, batteries now and you're sitting there going, well, fuck. <laughs> bird. I want to bring that bird into existence. Get away from me, you tag. Where am I? Let me go. Alice, Anything Alice, over here? I'm coming. 
Your husband refused to do as he was told. All he had to do was write what I wanted him to write. I have written. Now it's too late. It's his fault. You'll stay here. Oh, she, yeah. Now you will never get her back. Oh, my word. Okay. The, I just, why are we only finding this out now? I am much older than you. Well, yes. Older than your first work of art. I will find a new face to wear. Uh, someone else to dream me free. So now what happens is, is there more to do? The darkness is still there, so we've got to do something about it. Come on, my friend. I could feel Alice's presence close by. I understood what I had to do now. I knew how to write the ending to Departure. There's light and there's darkness. Cause and effect. There's guilt and there's atonement. But the scales always need to balance. Everything has a price. That's yes. where Zane had gone wrong. There's a long journey through the night back into the light. So, Alan's staying there to keep the darkness Alice? in check. Oh! It was all a dream. Could you imagine it? All of a sudden they go, and now this recap the entire game. It was like, uh, no, off. <laughs> so what now? So like all these days have passed or you That's it. Swim to the surface, girl. You're afraid of the dark, so swim. There's nothing darker than the bottom of a bloody ocean. Well, it might as well be an ocean. It's filled with darkness. Alice is alive. And then she goes insane and stars in her own game, Alice the Madness Returns. Alice? Nah, nah, that's not true. That'd be pretty awesome though. <laughs> so, in terms of the end, I don't know. I kind of actually like the going into that place and using the flashlight to bring words into existence into the item like the telephone pole and the and all that sort of stuff i actually thought that was pretty cool it just wish there was more to it sort of thing you know like different areas to go to and not just a straight line so is that it have we completed the game are the credits going to roll welcome to bright falls Deepest. Ah, so he wrote everyone back into existence. There they all are. 
and basically made them all okay. Well, that's cool. <laughs> yeah! There's Odin and Thor. Lady it's not a lake of the lamp. It's an ocean. Alan, wake up. Wow. Okay, that's that's pretty cool. Like, nice little ending. So as the credits roll, I gather I should give Um one second, I don't hear any music. Oh, Okay, uh, you're probably not going to hear any music as I'm going to have to uh, mute it, unfortunately. Because the song that's currently playing is Space Odyssey by David Bowie. I'm sorry, guys, but I can't play it due to copyright uh, problems. So, my verdict on this game, as usual, I'll be basing it on the four criterias, which is gameplay, graphics, music, and uh, storyline. Uh, we're going to start with the graphics due to the fact it's pretty the easiest one to do. I must admit, for a game that was designed for the Xbox 360, the PC version is amazing. There's barely any slowdown. I know it's nothing major. The bits where the game is supposed to slow down, you know, is pretty obvious. But sometimes I did notice a tad of slowdown. It's nothing really noticeable. Uh, it might be due to the fact I'm recording at the same time that it might be happening. Um, the only thing that I have a, a, a real problem with happens to be with the Xbox 360 cutscenes. Everyone looks ill. I, I, I sort of understand that. I think that's what they were going for, but unfortunately on the PC version, it shows more because the graphics are turned up even more in the game. So you kind of look at these characters and go, ooh, he doesn't look well, sort of thing. But that's just that's just my opinion. Overall, though, I give the graphics a 7.5 out of 10. Good graphics. I must admit, the PC, the game looks absolutely amazing. I have played the Xbox version and the PC one. Everything looks a bit crisper and cleaner. And it, it's not a lot nicer, sort of thing. Which, you know when you add it to the atmosphere of the game, works really well. Uh, let's talk about the music. Unfortunately, a lot of the music in the game is copyrighted music. An awful lot of it. So unfortunately, you guys haven't heard much of it. But at the end of each chapter, uh, there was a song that sort of explained in song version what the chapter was like, sort of thing, which I think is really cool. Uh, Music-wise, though, the game, well, due to the fact these are the same people that made Max Payne, feels very Max Payne sort of thing. It's very ambient, but it brings a, around that sort of edge vibe where you feel like nothing's sort of right style thing. It's really nice. It gives it the cinematic approach, but nothing memorable because of the music that they used in the game. And that's just sort of the problem with it. You remember like the song like The Lime in the Coconut, uh, David Bowie songs and stuff like that. But you're not going to remember the game's own soundtrack. Uh, you probably notice I'm trying to avoid talking about the plot. <laughs> we'll get to that. Next, we're going to move on to gameplay. Uh, this is where the game... Oh, hang on a minute. I haven't given my verdict on the music. I give the music a 7 out of 10. Good music, but relies way too much on actual copyrighted music than its own like sort of style um now we're going to move on to gameplay this is where things are a hit and miss for me um absolutely love the idea of having to use a flashlight to take down the uh protection of the darkness uh to kill enemies and I like the enemy design there's lots of variations like you've got the big tough guys and you've got the skinny small guys the big problem is is that problem, taking down the enemies using your flashlight. When you've seen some of the parts where I had so many enemies around me that it became unfeasible just to take them out one at a time. And as you spotted in a few sections, 
I ran through and didn't really um I didn't really attempt to take any of them out because you realize you can't because there are too many enemies. <laughs> I'd hate to try to do this game on nightmare mode. I think I would quite literally throw my computer out the window. Oh, that would be terrible. But it's a great concept. The level design's really well done as well. Uh, lots of places to go, lots of stuff to collect. As we found, there's 106 manuscript pages and 100 thermos flasks in the game. That's a lot to collect. But at the same time, I do like uh, the fact that your flashlight was your target in ret uh, reticle. Really cool. Uh, the weapon's really good as well. Although, be it too many, it... it you know, it's it's supposed to be a psychological uh, horror. I think was what it was. Uh, is what it was calling itself. Sorry, I've got the book right here, so I was taking a look, see if it mentions it. No, it just basically says it's a survival guide. Um, but yeah, I must admit, I give the actual gameplay eight out of ten. It's a good game, not the best in terms of gameplay, but really good in terms of what it's trying to do. Um, and it achieves it really well. Uh, the jump scares, although to be it, it's supposed to be a psychological horror, so there should be mind jump scares, which makes you think about it, were really good, especially towards the end. And that final boss, the tornado, brilliant. Although be it a little easy, it would have been nice if they'd have thrown like small things at me every now and then and I had to dodge, but that's just my opinion. Like I said, 8 out of 10, really good. Uh, unfortunately, now I've got to talk about the plot line to this game. Now, this is going to be a bit difficult, as I haven't actually played this game for over a month uh, since the last uh, recording group that I did. So I'm sort of going back in my own mind and remembering it. Um, if I just played this through in one day, the plot might have, you know, me gone, what's the plot? There wasn't much there. But now I've had a bit of time to think about it. It's not a bad story. It's told sort of the way the game say, uh, where it's said in the game. It feels like you're reading, like he's reading the script in front of him as the, as you're playing the game. He's reading the script, like Alan walks into a building, blah blah blah, sort of thing. And it sometimes takes you out of the immersion, but I feel sometimes works. It's really good. Um, unfortunately, though. Plot-wise, it's supposed to be, as I keep saying, a psychological horror, but loses itself about midway through the game. Like, the beginning of the game, you get all this, this brilliant psychological-style stuff. You're always thinking, you know, is this real? What am I doing? Sort of thing. And then midway through the game, it's no longer what's real, what's not. It's, uh, enemy, point gun, shoot. And unfortunately, that sort of takes you out of it. I understand that they, you know, they're making a game, so they have to make a lengthy game. But I just wish they'd put more emphasis like in a Resident Evil game where you don't know what's around the corner and stuff like that. Um, the ending, though, makes up for it. Really good ending. Um, I, well, I say it's a good ending, at least, because it's sort of like <laughs> you completed the game, but you're not free. And they actually made two uh, DLCs for this game called The Signal and The Writer. Don't know whether or not I'm going to be doing those as bonus episodes or not. Um, main reason being is A, never play for them. Uh, it would be interesting to see a blind LP. And uh, B, I think I've had enough of Alan Wake for now. I understand that it's going to be fun. And there is actually a standalone game called The, um, I think it's called the American Nightmare. Um which would be fun to do at some point as well. But for storyline-wise, I'm giving this an 8 out of 10. Not bad. Could have been better. Overall, I'm giving this game an 8.5 out of 10. It doesn't get a higher one where everything that comes together makes a better game. Unfortunately, it sort of doesn't. Some of it doesn't meld together properly. But at the end of the day, fun game... You could complete it in roughly oh, 10 hours, maybe even less if you run through it really, really quickly, like I didn't. Um, but yeah, it was a lot of fun. So I'm going to be taking a few days off uh, to get ready for my next LP. The main reason being is uh, Scottster has asked me to do some 
uh, bonus episodes for South Park The Stick of Truth. And I kind of need to finish those off. But until next time, I'll see you later. <laughs>